Welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. And today, I'd like to introduce you to some little friends that I have with me. This is four little chimney sweeps, and they're just sort of <laughs> hanging right here on my shirt. These are the cutest little devils, and they live in chimneys. Ooh, we've got one that's hungry here. And a lot of people hear them in the chimney, but not too often do you get a chance to see them. And believe it or not, in this mess of birds here, there are four of them. There's one hidden under there, and they're little babies. Just a couple of weeks old. I thought you might enjoy seeing these. I borrowed these from Diana Schaefer, the bird lady here in Muncie, to show you. So I tell you what, let's have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me today. And while they're doing that, I'll see if I can get these rascals off my shirt and we'll get started here. This is like pulling leeches off. So we'll just take them right off. They have unbelievable little claws. Come on. There we go. Here's one. Yeah. Let's say you don't have to worry about them falling. All right. There. Okay. Today I have my standard old 18 by 24 inch canvas up here. This is a triple primed canvas, so it's all ready to go. And I've covered it with a nice thin even coat of the liquid white, so it's wet and slick, and we can get started. <laughs> they think it's time to eat. Let's have some fun today. Let's start out today with a little touch of the cad yellow. Just a small amount on the brush. Just, just sort of tap the bristles into it so you get a little tiny bit. We don't want to overload it, just a little bit. Okay, and let's go right up here. And this is such a fantastic day. Let's do just a beautiful, happy little painting. Put a little tiny bit of this yellow into the sky. Just a small amount. Just somewhere right along in there. Now then, without cleaning the brush, I want to add a little touch of the yellow ochre. And we'll put a little touch of that in there. Just let them blend together. Just happy little colors. They make you feel good. They're nice and bright and warm colors. Now then, maybe, but still without cleaning the brush, because I'm lazy, I look for easy ways to do things. A little of the alizarin crimson, just a small amount. And right down in here, we'll just add a little touch of crimson. And we're just making little crisscross strokes. Little X's. That's all there is to it and just allow these colors to blend together. Just blend right together. Maybe even a little bit of that crimson up in here, wherever you want it. Just sort of look around and decide where you think it should live in your painting. Hope you enjoy the little birds and stuff that we show on the program. I'm such a fanatic for God's little creatures that I like to share those with you. There we are. Now then, maybe we have a little light spot right here. So I tell you what, maybe I'll just take my finger and take a little touch of that crimson. Just a very small amount of paint. If we just put the indication of a little sun up in there, we can take the big brush and blend it. And this will soften it to any degree of lightness or darkness that you want. You can just soften it until it goes away if you want to. We want to keep a little tiny bit of it there, just enough that there's a little indication. Now then, put some little clouds up there. And for that, I'm going to take some alizarin crimson and a touch, just a touch, of the thalo blue. Now, the thalo blue is many, many times stronger than the crimson, so proportionately, we're using much, much more crimson than we are blue. Be very careful. That blue is so strong, <laughs> it'll eat up your whole world in a heartbeat. Now, we just take the old large brush. I still haven't cleaned it. Still haven't cleaned it. Just tap a little color into it. Now then. Maybe up in here live some nice, just happy little stringy clouds across here. Now, if you was to use blue by itself to do this and you touch the yellow, oh my gosh, well, you know what had happened. You'd have bright green. And in this particular painting, I'm not looking for a green sky. So by using this lavender color, it, when we hit the yellow, the worst that can happen is it turns a beautiful brownish color. And that's okay. We can live with that today. Maybe. There's one right in here. You have to make big decisions. Though. Where does your little clouds live? They just float around and have fun all day. There is another one. As many or as few as you want. Let's go to the other side over here. We'll have a few coming in here. Little stringy clouds. There. We just sort of stair step this one. Maybe it comes right on down. It might go right up to the sun there. Just right up to it. 
and a little bit right along here. This will this will be our horizon right along in this area. So we just put a little color right in, wherever you want it. Okay, now at long last we'll wash the brush. And we wash our brush with odorless thinner. Shake off the excess. And then <laughs> just beat the devil out of it. That's the most fun part of this whole technique. You take out all your frustrations and hostilities. Be sure your brush is good and dry and barely touching, barely touching. Three hairs and some air. Just gently blend the sky. And you blend it to any degree of softness that you want. You can continue to blend it till it's just as soft as velvet, or you can leave it quite strong. It's up to you. It's up to you. Painting is a very individual thing. So you have to make big decisions in your world. There. Now then, tell you what, let's take that same color. We'll just add a little bit more to the two inch brush. Same old brush, just a little bit of color. Maybe back in here, somewhere in here, maybe there's a happy little hill that lives back here. I want it almost the same color as the sky. Very soft, very subdued, it's far away. It's far, far away. Don't let it get too strong on you, it'll stand out. We want this to be way off in the distance somewhere. Far away, far, far away. There, that's all you need. Now, <laughs> there we are. You ever see our camera crew? There, now we can soften that. So it just sets wee back here. Now then, let's have some, maybe some little grassy areas in there. Shoot. We'll take, we'll just use that same color. I'm gonna add a little Van Dyke brown to it, maybe a little black. Just want to darken it up a little bit, but the same lavender color with a little Van Dyke, a little black mixed, just so it's darker. And let's begin tapping in some basic little shapes here. Maybe there's a little hill that lives right there. Shoot, maybe it comes down. Just make a decision. You have unlimited power here. You can create any illusion that you can conceive in your mind. So just allow that to happen. Allow it to happen. There we are. Begin thinking about where you want all these little things to live. See, now you can see how distant that hill looks. It really doesn't show up well until you put something in front of it. There. And we're always playing darks against light, lights against dark, continually. Continually. The finest paint made can only capture a small portion of light. So we have to work with illusions. And when you paint, you play, once again, lights against dark, darks against light. There we go. There. Okay. So that quickly, we have some background filled in here. And you could really just wipe this on. This is just a super way to practice. You could put this on with a paint roller. All we're doing is just blocking in some basic color here. There. Okay, same old brush. I'm not even gonna clean it. I'm gonna go right down here, pick up a little bit of the yellow, a little yellow ochre, a little Indian yellow. Here and there, we'll get the least little touch of the bright red. Not much, not much. Maybe I'll be right back. Get a little touch of the dark sand here, just a dull little, little, so it's not too bright. A little touch of sap green, too. Ooh, that's getting nice. But by loading it on the brush and mixing color on the brush, in this brush now, we have a multitude of colors happening. It's not one flat old dead color. And you push that brush, give it a little push, and that loads paint right on the end of the bristles. And with that, then we can go up here and very lightly begin tapping in some beautiful little grassy hills. Start in the area that's farthest away from you and work forward, 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 always coming forward. There. Now maybe, watch here. See, maybe it comes right down. See now, you created a different plane there. That's simple. That's simple. What power you have. 